Hey everyone, Lisa here. Today I wanted to get real with all of you and take a stab at answering the book addiction tag question. So without further ado, let's roll those intro credits. First question, what is the longest amount of time you can comfortably go without picking up a book? For me, that would be right around 24 hours. I really love, at the end of the day, curling up with a book, turning off all the distractions, email, text, phone, all of it. I just want to focus on my book, it's kind of like yoga for the mind, just relax. So I really like settling down with the book at the end of the day. It's kind of like a cherry on top at the end of a long day. So about 24 hours. Question two, how many books do you carry on your person, physical or device at any one time? For me, I usually tend to read one book at a time. Right now that would be Catch 22. So that would be the one physical book that I lug around with me everywhere. But on my phone, I have two Kindle books. I'm really not a fan of the digital forms of books. And then I have about 36 audiobooks. I had to look that up for you guys. Question number three. Do you keep every book you buy, receive, or are you happy to pass them on to make space for more? Ish. This question really hits home for me because if you haven't already guessed it by my channel name, I live in the wonderful city of Troy. However, the library is severely underfunded. So if you're interested in a really popular book, such as the Twilight series, if you go into the computer and you put a hold on that book, there are 25 to 30 holds already on that book which means that you might not get your hands on that book for months. Personally, if I am interested in that popular book, I'm just gonna buy it on Amazon. Then what I'm, when I'm through with it, I do tend to donate it back to the library, especially because I feel guilty if I read a book and then I'm like, mm, I know I'm not gonna read it again for a while, it's just gonna sit on this shelf. Well, I know there's 24 or you know 25 or 30 people dying to read this book. So I do give away the vast majority of the books that I buy. And I'm gonna go on a little tangent here. I love the library. When I was growing up, I was just broke as a joke. The library for me was a refuge. It was a safe haven. It was free, it has air conditioning, it has that book smell, that smell of ideas and promise and hope for the future. When I was in the fifth grade, I actually won the grand prize at the summer reading program and it was a tent and a canteen. And I remember this, this was more than 20 years ago and I still so vividly remember those prizes. So number one library super fan right here, I love the library. All right, tangent over. Question four, how long would you spend in a bookshop on a standard visit? For me, not a lot of time, usually about 10 minutes or less. If I go to the bookstore, it's for a specific task. I'm in there to get a specific book. If I can't find it right away, I'll ask someone who works there, grab it and get out. So I usually don't spend that long because I don't have a lot of time to browse if I'm in a bookstore. Question five. How much time per day did you, do you actually spend reading? That is a really good question and I can't, I, the time varies depending on the day. So during the week, I don't get to spend as much time reading as I would like to because I do work full time during, you know, during the weekdays. So I, I definitely read more on the weekends 
If I had to put a time on it, I would say probably somewhere between one and three hours every day. Question six, where does the task picking up a book appear on your daily to-do list? That actually is pretty high. If you haven't already gleaned, reading is pretty important to me. I also have really, really, really ambitious reading goals. So if you don't diligently read every day or close to every day, it's just impossible to keep up with the goals that I've set for myself. So it is, it is really important for me to make that a priority. Question seven, how many books do you reckon you own in total, including eBooks? I honestly have no idea how many books I have. I did tell you I've got the two Kindle books and the 38 audiobooks. These are all of my books that I'm reading for 2020 this year. This, this year I read all these books and I'm reading Catch 22 and then I have a few other books. So these are some of my books and then I'll take you to my bookcase and you can see the books that I have out there too. These are my two sad bookcases. The first one is primarily just my books from law school and when I was in school for accounting. Then my other bookcase, that one is just my other books. My favorite book is Walden, so I have two copies of those. For those of you who are not familiar with Walden, that is where Henry David Thoreau went to Walden Pond, which is essentially the woods, for some number of years and authored this book. And every time I read it, no matter how many times I read it, I feel really relaxed. Question eight. Approximately how often do you bring up books in conversation? I actually don't talk about books that often in conversation. My husband hates, hates, hates reading. So I don't talk about it that often. But there are some book lovers out there. And of course, we talk. So if you're a book lover, drop me some comments. I would love to engage in a conversation with you. Question nine, what is the biggest book page count you have finished reading? Does the Bible count? If it doesn't, I would say Lord of the Rings. I know, I know, I know, that's multiple books put into one, I get it. But it's either Lord of the Rings or the Bible, take your pick. Is there a book you had to get your hands on against all odds? Searched bookstore, online digging, stocked author, etc. Yes, I have had some difficulty in securing a book. There is, I have it with me, so I'll get it out for you guys. There is this book, Games Mother Never Taught You. My professor encouraged me to read this book back when I was in law school. And it really offers a different perspective on the corporate world. And it has strategies for how to succeed in the corporate work environment. So I, I actually really enjoyed this book, but it's out of print. That's what made it so difficult to get. And it, it smells a little bit, but it's, it's worth the read. I really do enjoy it. But I will say if you want to read this book, I would say Mika Przinsky has a book. It's called Knowing, like Know Your Value or Knowing Your Value. It's kind of the modern day of this book. So if you can't get a hold of this one, I would say read that one. Question 11. Is there a book you struggled to finish because you refused to DNR? I'm kind of scared about answering this question because I know my answer is really controversial, but it is my answer. And the book that I actually have DNF'd in the past that I read this year, and I want to say before I even mention what the book is, I love the movie You Got Mail. I, I do love it because they talk about this book in that movie. So I do love the movie, but I, I don't like the book they talk about at all. And the book, I know, I know, I know. I'm already, okay, can't wait to see the comments. It's Pride and Prejudice. I do not like that book at all. 
The first chapter, in fairness, I like the first chapter. I was actually laughing out loud between Mr. and Mrs. Bennett. It was really funny. So I had really high hopes for the book. But then I read the book and I did not care for it at all. The characters to me were not endearing and I didn't care about their problems. So you have Elizabeth who thinks Mr. Darcy is pretentious and stuck up. And Mr. Darcy is pretentious and stuck up and he doesn't want to dance at the dance. I don't care if Mr. Darcy doesn't want to dance at the dance. Guess what? Nothing has changed in 200 years. If you go to high school, there are a sea of ladies at the dance and all the guys are playing basketball in the gym. Nothing's changed. Like, I don't care if Mr. Darcy doesn't want to dance at the dance. <sighs> Why did I spend my life reading this book? Like, I didn't care. And then the other like big thing was Mr. Bingley didn't like abandon, or well he abandoned, you know, the main character's sister. Okay, maybe Mr. Bingley wasn't that into your sister. Maybe her breath stunk. Maybe she made a Tic Tacs. Maybe Mr. You know, Bingley found somebody on Bumble or Tinder. I don't know. I don't care. Go find somebody else. Go get another, you know, fish on your hook. I don't know. I don't care. Like, oh, I just did not care. And when the book came to an end, I was just like, this... I, I, didn't, I didn't care for any of the characters. I wasn't invested in their stories. I know a lot of people love Pride and Prejudice. I will say that I did like the movie better than the book, which is one of those rare instances, in my opinion, where the movie adaptation was so much better than the book. But you guys can leave me your comments. I know you can feel free to love Pride and Prejudice. It just wasn't my jam. I did finish it this time though. Question 12. What are three, some of your main book goals for 2021, if you've started planning? I do have at least three book goals and I'll share them with you. I honestly don't even know if I can do all of these, but I'm gonna try. The first one is I wanna read the entire Harry Potter series next year. I've only read the first book, but I'm gonna start all over from scratch and I'm going to read the first book all the way to the end. My second goal is for any of you who've seen my other videos, I fell in love with his Dark Materials trilogy and Philip Pullman, the author, he wrote two follow-up books. One is 10 years before his Dark Materials trilogy and 10 years after. So those two books are super high on my to-do list because I, I love his books. And then my third goal, I'm going to have a monthly some are I'm gonna have a monthly book club in 2021. So I'm going to need to stay up to date so I can entertain all of you. So if you're not already a member or a subscriber of my channel, make sure to subscribe if you're interested in a monthly book club in 2021. 13. Have you ever had the privilege of converting someone into a reader by inspiration or your incessant nagging? Personally, I just set an example. I read, I read often, I enjoy it, I'm not ashamed of it. And it's, it has had positive impacts on other people around me. If you constantly nag somebody, I mean, what they're gonna do is when they see you, they'll, you know, be reading their book and as soon as you're gone, they'll be like, free time. It doesn't work. In my opinion, it doesn't work. So just set a good example. When people see you reading, they'll know that if you if you put your time in and you're investing your time in reading, it'll rub off, I think, on other people. It usually rubs off. 14. Describe what books mean to you. Five words. For me, that would be different world perspective and life. So I hope you guys enjoyed the answers to my book addiction tag. It's been a lot of fun. 
And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay up to date on my upcoming book club. Until next time, everyone, I'm Lisa of Troy. Peace.